Good morning fellow KBF church members and also to those who are watching this service online wherever you are. We welcome you here and we are glad that you are able to join us this morning. This past week has been a very difficult week for us as a church with the passing of Uncle Noah. Our thoughts and prayers continue for Auntie Punita and the girls. Before we start with our service this morning, I would like to read a passage from the Bible taken from Isaiah 25 verse 1. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name, for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago.
the season cover me with your hand and leave me in your righteousness and I look to Wait on you. I'll sing to you, Lord. Oh.
morning church. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belongs to him was his own, but they have everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving the testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace were upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostle of Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, saw a field that belongs to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of the Lord. Welcome again to KBF's online service. It's really been some time since we have met physically and I really miss that. Um, miss having to see all of you and uh, shake your hands, which we can't do for some time more. Um, so it is a very different season we're going through. If it's your first time joining us online, I am Rishan and uh, I've been in Kajang Baptist since 2013. And um, I've been serving in this church uh, ever since. So let's just pray before we begin. Father in heaven, we give thanks to you that we can still uh, listen to your word. Father, I ask that you will um, put me out of the way. I ask that you would help me communicate um, your thoughts through me clearly. And I pray that um, this would um, edify the church. And for any other viewer who's online who's joining us today, in Jesus' name I ask and pray. Amen. So we all know this is a very different season and what has been on my heart um, through this time is community especially with the passing of brother noah this week i could not have appreciated and witnessed the importance of community evermore so this will be the topic of my sharing this morning god's given heaven on earth community in this case, I am not referring to your local neighborhood. Yes, your local neighborhood would be the community that you live in, in the sense of geography, but I am referring to a very close-knit uh, community that shares their lives with one another at a spiritual level, which is the Christian community. As the definition of community is a group of people having um, a particular characteristic in common, the Christian community is characterized by people having the same faith in Jesus Christ. So in my sharing today, I'll be referring to chapters of the book of Acts. So let me start with the essence of the community, and that is the gospel. The gospel is relevant to the Christian community back in Acts when it just started, and still is relevant to our community today. The gospel is the essence of what brought the community to exist and brought them through all the persecutions that they faced. So what is the gospel? It is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came as man and lived among us on earth. But men, we, being sinful in nature, we deserved being punished for our sins, and we deserve the wrath of God. But God, in his love, sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. And because he did that, he paid for the punishment that we were supposed to. And so, um, we have been granted forgiveness through Jesus Christ. So if we would believe in Jesus Christ and repent from our sins and follow him, we will be accepted by God. Now this is the belief that brought people together to form the community that we see that started in Acts 2 verse 42 to 47 and the Christian community that we see today. So I'm going to read to you what the community was like um, that's recorded in Acts 2, verse 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. 
Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and, and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So it's a beautiful picture because we see that they were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And Poon read from Acts 4 earlier, uh, from verses 32 to 37. And it's are almost parallel passages, but they, they complement one another in describing uh, what the early community that started was like. So we're going to draw some observations from these passages to grasp uh, a better image of what the community was like, as I mentioned. So what is the significance in these passages? We see the first verse that I read from um, what I pulled out in chapter 2. Verse 42 tells us they were devoted to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread in remembrance of the Last Supper, which is an event that they um, had before exiting Egypt, and to prayer. And in chapter 4, in verse 32, all the believers were in one heart and mind, no one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. So, how could they be in one heart and mind, and what brought them to be in one heart and mind? So it had to be that they had the same belief in Jesus Christ. And then we see later on, after they have committed themselves to uh, the teachings of the apostles, they would have had a similar understanding and desire within them to bring forth um, the teachings of Jesus Christ. So, um, this is how they were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. Because they have now a glimpse of the love that they were shown through Jesus, and that um, God loved them so much he was willing to give his son. So these people uh, were willing to give their possessions. They didn't need to hold on to it as much as they would have anymore because they now understood how much God loved them and sacrificed for them, that they can also sacrifice things that they had for others. And this is how the gospel changes our hearts, and that is how they made the believers one in heart and mind. So we see um, acts of the community that resulted from uh, the believers that were in one heart and mind. So apart from sharing, uh, what they had, they sold their possessions to meet others' needs as well. So we see this um, in chapter 2, verse 45, and in chapter 4, verse 34 to 35. So the importance of community in the early church. Both passages show how community met each other's needs. Uh, Acts 4, 24, we see the community of believers also praying together declaring God as sovereign and for boldness later on in verse 29 to continue sharing the gospel. This is after Peter and John were threatened by the religious leaders to stop preaching about Jesus. Community encourages one another in this way. So uh, through difficult times, um, the community came together and they prayed, praising God first and then praying for boldness because they knew what changed their life was most important for them and they've asked for boldness in sharing this good news with others. So we also see that it's actually God's design for believers to be in a community. And I'm going to pull from verses from other parts of the Bible. For example, Ephesians 4 says we uh, should be completely humble and gentle, be patient bearing with one another in love. And in Hebrews 3, verse 13, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So we are to encourage one another daily, and we can only do so if we are in a community. And uh, we have to have this same belief that we are striving to be uh, followers of Jesus. And in Romans 12, verses 10, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. And they demonstrated this by giving their possessions 
to meet the needs of others. So such selflessness that they have imitated as how Christ has um, died for them. In James 5, 16, it says, uh, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer for a righteous person is powerful and effective. So this verse is prompting for us to rely on one another, that we will be open enough and humble enough to put our pride down and actually confess our sins to one another. Because sin is deceitful, as we read early in Hebrews. And it's going to want us to, to either, it's going to give us some responses. Either we'll be um, so guilty that we can't get over it and we don't want to open up ourselves, or we're too prideful and we are afraid of other people knowing about our sin that we don't want um, to open up about our struggles as well. But here it says to confess your sins to each other and to pray for each other so that you may be healed. So in a community of believers, this is what we're uh, told to do that would help us um, grow in the teachings of Christ Jesus. So while we believe salvation uh, from our sins is through Jesus Christ, but we are in the process of sanctification, and that is a process towards holiness to become more and more like Christ as we declare to be followers of Christ. Make sense? So we need one another. We cannot go um, and try to be like Jesus alone. It won't work that way because we see how it's designed that we rely on one another confess to one another in areas that we struggle with so that others can um, pray for us, pray for God's strength in us, and also uh, keep us accountable so that we will want to turn away from sin. And um, drawing to how it is relevant to us today from looking at the past communities, God still uses difficulties today, as he did in the past, to grow communities and further his gospel. So in this season, we see that uh, the MCO has been on due to the coronavirus. And though it's kept us physically apart for most times, it did drive churches to be more intentional in keeping connected. Um, for uh, my Bible study group, we prayed more together more than uh, we did before the MCO. And it's, it's, it's a difficult situation that, that drove us to pray more. And so this is how God uses difficult situations for us to draw closer to Him, to rely on Him more. As mentioned in Acts 4, we see a community of early believers prayed for boldness, following threats to stop Jesus Christ. In Acts 8, the church community scattered throughout Judea and Samaria as a result of great persecution, and more communities of believers emerged in different regions because they were scattered and they continued in their sharing so that others came into the same belief as they were and they formed new communities there. So the church community um, really grows through persecution. I think it's a way... Um, that God drives us to rely on Him more. And as we do that, we see His faithfulness um, work through us. And also, through the church today, um, we find more needs are made known to us um, easily when we are in a community because people will be looking out for one another. And uh, due to that, it's easy for communities to uh, let one another know of a certain brother or sister's needs, and these needs can be met, whether it's financially, whether it's a physical need, or an emotional need. And um, in this season, because the economy is down, this uh, has been happening with our church. And so we really do see how the church steps up with its community uh, throughout difficult times. Uh, most recently, uh, just this week on Thursday, when we also came uh, to know of Noah's passing, uh, this is a great time 
that I saw the church community really um, stepped up and poured into uh, Punita and her family. Uh, for this, it was a very personal experience for me um, to see and witness how God worked through uh, my church community for supporting this family because death is never an easy um, thing to face. And the death of a loved one in a difficult time like this, it, it adds a lot of um, emotional burden and struggles onto the, the immediate family, of course. And so I learned that, I learned to value the hope in Jesus Christ so much more. Because we know that in the end, as is promised in the Bible, that we will, uh, we who are believers in Jesus Christ will be reunited again. Those who have passed on from this earth and has committed their lives and been faithful to Christ, we will be able to see them too. And this brings such um, comfort and, and peace when we cling on to this hope that we can meet our loved one once again. And I also learned to value taking up opportunities to build relationships um, because um, there are many relationships that I put aside because of work or other responsibilities. But um, the movement control really in this period has actually slowed down my work a lot and um, I've been able to connect with more people. And for Noah, I'm glad that um, it was during a time that work was still busy, but I'm glad that uh, for those opportunities that I got to speak to him and got to uh, know of his well-being, his spiritual well-being, before he went on to the operation and, and things start to go on from there. So, because physical death can happen at any time, uh, it was a very short time that uh, uh, our church really quickly pulled together and um, put together a service for the send-off of Noah. And we see, I saw that um, many members of the church take up different roles voluntarily in, on such short, short notice. And they were able to just put down a lot of things that could have been on their schedule and pour into this family. And so it's such a great witness to the love of Jesus Christ. And I think this is why community is so, so important. When emotional and physical burdens are lightened because we carry them together and we pray together when we remind each other of the promise that we have in Christ. And it gives us comfort. It really does. So i like to share an encouragement through a passage. So C.S. Lewis wrote, In each of my friends, there is nothing that only some other friend can fully bring up. By myself, I am not large enough to call the whole man into activity. I want other lights than my own to show all his facets. Now that Charles is dead, I shall never again see Ronald's reaction to a specific Caroline joke. Far from having more of Ronald than having him to myself, now that Charles is away, I have less of Ronald. Hence, true friendship is the least jealous of loves. Two friends delight to be joined by a third and three by a fourth. We possess each friend not less but more as the number of those whom we share him increases. In this, friendship exhibits a glorious nearness by resemblance to heaven. For every soul, seeing him in her own way, communicates that unique vision of all the rest. That, says an old author, is why the seraphim in Isaiah's vision are crying, Holy, 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 to another. And this is in Isaiah 6, verse 3. The more we thus share the heavenly bread between us, the more we shall all have. So Tim Keller's saying, Lewis's point is that even in a human being is too rich and multifaceted to be uh, fully known one-on-one. -on -one. You think you know someone, 
but you alone can't bring out all that is in the person. You need to see the person with others. And if this is true with another human being, how much more so with the Lord? You can't really know Jesus by ourselves. So he's saying each person is, reacts differently to any other person. And when you have a close uh, uh, group of friends and you see the conversations that go on or the jokes that go on, each person relates to one another uniquely between themselves and you will see this other side of the person that you've never seen before. So for Jesus, in being God and we having been made in his image, and, and he's like, you know, uh, the original and we're like the blueprint. So how much more um, can we see God if we see how um, each person in the community relates to God? Yeah, it's quite mind-blowing. So I hope that um, that encourages you to be connected in a community. Um, to my Christian friends, if you are not plugged into a church community, I pray that you will find one because we are meant to support one another. As we heard last Sunday, we cannot be a digital Christian attempting to follow Jesus alone. We need the support of others. If you, and if you haven't commit, committed your uh, life to following Jesus or you have questions, I hope that you will uh, connect with us by dropping us a message on Kajang Baptist Facebook page so that we can get to know you. And we hope to um, also share with you um, how Jesus has changed our lives and formed our community. So with that, I'll pray and we can close. Father, we thank you for this time that we can learn from your word and the community in Acts. We are grateful for how you have shown us how to relate to one another in your word. And we ask that we will submit to your word and submit ourselves to one another so that we can build up one another to walk um, in the commands of your teachings to be more and more like you. And we pray for um, Punita and her family in these hard times. Uh, we want to remember them. And we thank you for your faithfulness in their family and the peace and comfort that you have poured out to them that we have witnessed due to the promises and uh, joy that we find in being uh, your children, O oh God. So we lift up your family into your hands and I lift up all the listeners um, in my sharing today and I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.